Um, I wrote a book. This is Managing and Other Lies by me. It's gorgeous. The cover design was done by Katerina Naskowski and uh, it's so beautiful. Managing and Other Lies is a 200 page collection of queer horror stories. And I wrote it. <laughs> it's out everywhere on July 12th and if you're watching this before then you can pre-order it. There are links in the description. There are six stories in here. The titular story Managing makes up the first half of the book and the other five stories make up the second half. And five of these six stories are specifically about the trans experience. If you're interested in getting a digital copy, pre-orders are live right now. And if you'd like a physical copy like this one, those will be available from July 12th onwards. You can't pre-order the physical, I don't know why. But you can get your hands on one if you want one on July 12th. So what is it exactly? I've been writing this book for about two years. And the first thing I wrote was the title story, Managing, which I guess is technically a novella. The title of the story comes from the fact that the protagonist is managing a house and the fact that they are not managing very well. Managing is a gothic horror story, and it is, in my mind, a marriage between the themes and ideas of Shirley Jackson and Franz Kafka. What would happen if a Kafka-esque protagonist walked into a Shirley Jackson-esque haunted house setting? Our nameless protagonist has been wandering aimlessly and takes a weird job cleaning and tidying and generally looking after an empty old house at the edge of an English village. And the story is written as a series of journal entries from their perspective. They settle into a routine in the house, cleaning, tidying, and also exploring. The house is strangely large and labyrinthine. But before long, they realize that they are not alone. There is a rude and bullyish middle-aged man who appears now and then, tends to the garden, and is very rude and obnoxious to the protagonist who doesn't understand what this man is doing here. And shortly after that, they meet an enigmatic and hungry woman who lives upstairs. The woman is difficult to find, appearing occasionally. And she offers our protagonist a chance at a better life, whatever that means. But in exchange for that life, our protagonist must be willing to give this woman bits and pieces of their own self. As the story goes on, it becomes more grotesque. And this story is me wrangling with all of the themes and tropes of the gothic genre while injecting a really healthy dose of the Kafka-esque. And it is very, very much a transgender story. If that sounds interesting to you, check it out. As for the other five stories, like I said, they make up the second half of the book. One story is called Chloe Claire One, and it is written as a series of YouTube comments and DMs between a YouTuber and a very passionate fan. The fan is clearly lonely and is looking for a friend, and the YouTuber naively takes pity on this fan, responds politely to their comments and to their DMs, and eventually things get tense and frightening. This story was very much inspired by the murky and stressful existence of parasocial relationships. The third story is called A Mother's Love, and it is written as a play script, written by me and directed by a guy who doesn't exist. In this play, a young trans woman only has one person left to come out to, her own mother. And she decides to do so on a weekend trip back home to stay with her mum and talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. She's nervous, she's afraid, she knows it's not gonna go well, and it doesn't. Her mother is not kind to her. But even worse than that, there is a ghost of a man haunting her mother's house and her mother can't see him. What does he want? What is he doing there? Why is he only haunting and taunting Cassandra? The angriest story in here is called We Understand Each Other Perfectly. It's written in traditional prose, and it follows a trans teen runaway called Mel. She has left home early in the morning as the sun was rising and she's hitchhiking trying to get to London. And she's picked up by a middle-aged woman who looks kind of hippie-ish and fun and friendly. And as they drive to London, they get to talking about their lives and about politics and about the state of Britain today. And Mel hopes that she can trust this woman, but maybe she can't. 
maybe things are gonna go really, really badly. And the strangest and grossest and honestly most upsetting story in here is just called Baby. It's written in a minimalist style where you only get the dialogue between two characters. It's kind of like a play script, but not. These two characters have just had a baby together and their relationship is strained. One of them is back home with her parents, just taking some time. And while she's there, she notices that this village that she grew up in that has never changed has suddenly changed. It's different, it's weird. And back home with her partner, something is wrong with the baby. He's sick and he seems to be changing. This is a very, very gruesome body horror story. And I really feel like I need to give trigger warnings for that. It's very much a trans story. And it kind of came about in two ways. Partly it was inspired by a dream I had, which feels kind of cliche when it comes to writing a short story, but that's what happened. And it's also heavily inspired by the sheer grotesquerie and grossness of other great trans horror writers like Hayley Piper and Gretchen Felker Martin. And the final story in here is the only one that isn't about being trans or even queer. It's called Little Blue Sticky Notes, and it was inspired by my move to Glasgow, where weeks and weeks after unpacking and settling in, we kept finding little blue sticky notes everywhere. Notes that we use to write certain things on the boxes, and they just felt like they were haunting us. And it tells the story of a woman whose abusive husband has just died. She feels like she has been freed from him, but maybe she hasn't. She's ready to move into a place of her own, but she's not alone. He won't let her get away. As I said, the first and main story in here was heavily inspired by Franz Kafka and Shirley Jackson, and all of the other stories were heavily inspired by great trans and queer horror writers like Hayley Piper, Gretchen Felker Martin, Alison Rumfett, and Eric LaRocca, who was amazing enough to read this book ahead of time and write a blurb for it. Having Eric's words at the very top of my cover is extraordinary. It's a feeling I can't really describe, and I'm so grateful to them for reading and loving and writing a little bit about my book. Now, you might have already figured out that I have chosen to self-publish this book. That was not really a linear decision so much as it was inspired by a bunch of different things. For the past few months, I've been writing a lot of poetry, and my poetry is getting published in lots of different places. This month it's being published in two different anthologies. I'm going down to London soon for an awards ceremony for all of the published poets in this anthology collection. I'll talk more about that when it happens. And it's great having my poetry published, but I knew that getting these stories published traditionally was going to be a tall order. This is a 200 page short story horror collection about being trans. It's kind of a hard sell for agents and publishers, and I felt like it would end up just dying in a drawer somewhere unless I self-published it. My poetry is finding its readers, it's hitting its market, it's getting published, it's getting out there. These stories, I felt like I had to self-publish them. And I was also massively inspired by my clients as an editor. I've edited several great self-published novels that have come out or are coming out this year. And the pride and success of those amazing authors whose books I've read and loved and edited has been so inspiring to me. They've walked the path of grassroots self-publishing and are so proud of what they've accomplished and I was inspired by that. Everything I've done is grassroots. When I quit teaching, I started a blog with my best friend and we made a massive success of it. Off the back of that blog, I started a YouTube channel, which is now also a success, supported on Patreon by a wonderful community of brilliant bookworms. Everything I've done has been grassroots. I've done it on my own and I thought, okay, let's see if I can put a book out on my own. Let's see if I can self-publish a collection of transgender horror stories. And I have. As I said at the beginning, the cover was designed by Katerina Naskowski, and she gave me everything I wanted. And this is the beautiful thing about self-publishing, which maybe I'll talk about in a future video if there's some interest in it. As a self-published author, I had so much say over the creative process. I wrote the stories, I reached out to Eric LaRocca to blurb it, and I chose Katerina as my cover designer. I knew what I wanted, and I knew it was important to the themes and setting and tone of the book. The silhouette of a woman feeling hollowed out. Inside her silhouette is a haunted house that is filling her up and 
taking over her. A background of blue flowers with one single pink flower. And a cover that is almost entirely red, white, and blue, the colours of the British flag, save for that one pink flower. Thematically, all of this was very important to me, and Katerina listened to everything I said and produced something utterly stunning. From a DIY perspective, self-publishing this has been so satisfying, such an exciting adventure. I am so glad I did it. So, if you'd like a copy of Managing and Other Lies, you can follow the link in the description. If you're watching this before July 12th, you can pre-order the digital edition now, and come July 12th, the physical edition will also be available. And because I've self-published this through Amazon, the book is available in every single country that has Amazon. So it should be pretty easy to get your hands on it, if you want a copy. This is one of the proudest moments of my life, one of my greatest achievements, honestly, and I hope you haven't minded me being very self-indulgent with this video, but this is really wonderful. <laughs> I cannot stop smiling. I really, really hope that you pick up a copy of Managing and Other Lies by me. And if you do, I've got a lot of unfinished manuscripts, and I will immediately get to work on finishing and polishing those and publishing them in the future. I hope you check it out and subscribe for books.